she must take us down. Because she's the hero the underground deserves. And surely the one it needs right now. So she'll hunt us. Because she can take it. Because she's not a hero. She's a silent guardian. A watchful protector of Monster Kid. She is Undying the Undying. Leader of the Royal Guard. Hey all, it's Antonio from Merlin. Today we'll be talking about Undyne, one of the major characters you come across in indie RPG Undertale, created by Toby Fox. Before I continue, I would like to inform the viewers that this video does contain spoilers. All good? Okay then, let's carry on. In this video we'll be talking about Undyne's style, her personality, her attributes, a few theories and a few facts you probably didn't know about our ironclad fish warrior. As the protagonist progresses after entering Waterfall, you find a path that leads you into some tall grass. As you enter the tall grass, the camera pans upwards and this is where you find an iron-plated juggernaut, namely Undyne, standing on top of a ledge. It is in these moments where she enters the picture that the lighting within the area significantly changes. For foreshadowing reasons, I imagine. If left alive, Papyrus approaches her and attempts to convince her not to harm the human. You feel that Papyrus is intimidated and somewhat afraid of her by the way he moves and talks, even though they are friends. As the protagonist continues on, the grass rustles and alerts Undyne to their presence. She scopes out the grass for a moment and retreats. Undyne debuts her appearance as an armored knight, varying in light and dark shades of grey. Later on, as the protagonist progresses, we find that without the armor, Undyne is a fishy, anthropomorphic monster with blue scales and a log-red, fiery ponytail. She has red and blue fins on the sides of her head and a pair of sharp yellow protruding teeth with no nose in sight, with black vertical pupils and yellow sclera. She also wears red eyeshadow and has an eye patch on her left eye. When in casual wear, she also sports a black tank top and jeans. This is perhaps a way to let the player know that even though she's a foreshadowing monster warrior, she also has a humane demeanor. We also see this during the date with Alphys, where Undyne wears a white turtleneck under a black leather jacket with some of her hair down. Throughout Waterfall, Undyne follows the protagonist and repeatedly attacks them. But the protagonist always evades capture by either dodging her attacks or due to Monster Kid's interference. Although, at a later stage, Undyne approaches the protagonist while Monster Kid hangs on the side of a bridge. This is where you have to make some choices. If the protagonist saves Monster Kid, they will protect the protagonist from Undyne. But... If the protagonist decides not to help the monster kid, Undyne will save them instead. After which, Undyne then confronts the protagonist and stands on a crag while giving a monologue that she has practiced for, but cuts it short since she forgets the rest and launches into battle. Perhaps Undyne wants to be seen as the heroine of the monster realm, but sometimes is cut short of what she aims to be. If you think about it really, in a generalist perspective, why is Undyne hunting a child? We do know that Undyne is fulfilling her boss, King Asgore's request to acquire a total of seven human souls to break the barrier, free the monsters and blah blah blah. But what is the real meaning behind this hunt, of what we see as a fish monster chasing after a child really? If you're interested in checking out the history and backstory of Undertale, click on the link above or in the description below. The fish-based warrior was ultimately trained by King Asgore, making her a powerful fighter. 
Perhaps King Asgore's rage towards the humans pushed her into becoming a human hunter. Same like Papyrus, really, but slightly more intimidating. Although, apart from rage, Asgore also teaches her the value of pacifism. Noticed when she calls the protagonist a wimpy loser with a big heart. And although she does want to fulfill her master's request, if shown mercy, Undyne will quickly defend the protagonist from Asgore herself. This relationship between her and the King of the Monsters ultimately stems when a younger Undyne decided to challenge Asgore to a fight. But sadly could not land a single blow on him. She felt humiliated because he did not fight back and only dodged her attacks. This is where Asgore probably noticed that Undyne had a lot of potential with raging passion. And this might be why he offered to train Undyne and eventually promoted her to the head of the royal guard. This warrior facade can also be attributed to another part of her youth. Relating to times where she followed Gerson around to watch him beat up bad guys. Much like how Monster Kid follows Undyne. However, when Undyne tried to help Gerson fight bad guys, she ended up attacking quote unquote the mailman or something like that. Something else which is particularly apparent in Undyne is her possession of huge amounts of determination. Especially when we see that in the genocide route, after the protagonist attacks Monster Kid, Undyne protects them and takes the blow instead. Even though her HP reduces to zero, Undyne holds on through and by means of her determination reforms into Undyne the Undying. She even melts before her death implying that her body cannot handle the amount of determination she has within her. As a character, Undyne is very passionate in all she does, acting quickly on her ideas and steadfast in her beliefs. This is seen when she wants to defeat the protagonist, while trying to be fair and offering an explanation on how green mode works. Even though she's a fishy warrior monster, she has honor in what she does. The leader of the royal guard is not shy of taking on a challenge. This is seen both in battle and out of it. Especially when in the true pacifist route, Papyrus presents befriending the human protagonist as a challenge. Realizing that becoming besties with the protagonist would be the quote unquote perfect revenge, she accepts and says that the protagonist will feel enamored with Undyne by the end of their date. Really and truly though, Undyne loves Alphys. Undyne first met Alphys in the garbage dump and the two became close friends soon after. This relationship is also shown when Undyne tells the protagonist when they try to interact with the door to her room, that no nerds are allowed. She then says that some nerds are, possibly referring to Alphys. Within the Monster Kingdom, it would seem that Undyne is a pretty popular character overall, with some real good in her heart. This is apparent when seeing her relationship with Papyrus, her close friend. She is impressed by his persistence and trains him in cooking, but is concerned about his well-being and secretly doesn't want him to join the royal guard, because she believes he's too nice to fight. This could be the reason why she teaches him to cook, hoping that he changes his mind in joining the force. Ultimately, Undyne feels heartbroken and infuriated if the protagonist kills Papyrus during a neutral genocide route. Well, it's almost time up, but before I go, here's a fun fact about Undyne's name. You may think that Undyne is basically a play on words on Undying, as seen when she doesn't die when reduced to zero health. 
But there is also a theory that Undine derives from Undine, a womanly water nymph from Greek lore. And with that, it's time up, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this video. And if you would like to watch more videos on Undertale, click on the like button below and subscribe for more Merlin content. We'll see you soon. Happy trails, boys and girls!